welcome aboard. Uh, appreciate you attending today's webinar. And we're going to be speaking with Guaranteed Income Life Insurance Company's Nate Self, going through some very interesting and uh, uh, tangible information that we can use as it pertains to behavioral finance and uh, how we feel about our money. Before we get started in that, because we do have a diverse group of folks, I'm going to go through a brief, uh, just an overview of some details around IMS as an introduction, and then we'll get this switched over and move forward with uh, with Nate here and, and switch over the presentation. So appreciate the attendance, sit back and enjoy, and um, let us know if you have any questions as we reach back out and do our follow-up with you. So um, for those of you that are on the on the uh, event here as a new producer with IMS, uh, your first 180 days with IMS is crucial in our mind because uh, much like you with your clients, we have an opportunity to walk you through the steps of doing business with IMS, which is where the rubber meets the road and the best way to really uh, formulate and, and see how things are going to work together, whether that be with you uh, as a sole producer, your staff. Um, but getting a piece of business, that first piece of business through. In addition to that, we're also going to pay you for that piece of business. During your first 180 days, we'd like to reinvest back into your practice and, uh, and have uh, the opportunity to work with you on the business that comes from that. So we've got levels set up here, and all this can be emailed to you if you have a question afterwards about involvement or uh, access to the new producer builders program if you're new. I want to know where you land within that first 180 days, let your primary contact here at IMS know. But as an example here on the screen, the first level would be during that 180 days, you come on board with us. These are listed in annuity dollar amounts roughly, so $100,000 in premium for annuities during that first 180 days would yield you a choice between an iPad, $750 in cash, uh, or as I like to call it, my kids' money or my gas money. 1500 piece postcard mailing of your choice uh, or a pre-formatted email system marketing analysis and corporate identity package from our creative team here at IMS and it just gets better from there there's more when you get to the quarter of a million dollar level the mailing portion goes up the marketing reimbursement goes up to 2000 uh, coming on board and important to note many of uh, our advisors have their uh, of us have our own prospecting systems that have worked for us for years these we have to categorize. At the end of the day, if you're coming on board with us, we want the intent to be the important part. You submit 250,000 and have 250,000 with us uh, during that 180 days. We can utilize this money, these monies here, not for a postcard mailing, but to invest back into your practice via the program that's getting you in front of the people that you currently serve and help. So um, let us know if you have interest in that. And again, look forward to working with you on that program. Uh, if you are new or if you're existing, uh, we all like referrals. And just like your practice, referrals and introductions are on the higher end of the trust spectrum. Greatest opportunity to formulate a uh, partnership and a collaboration with our clients and the retail clients that you serve as well. So we do it no different than what we've learned on the street here. Um, if you refer a producer to IMS that uh, uh, looks like you, walks like you, could utilize some uh, assistance here in their practice in certain areas. Uh, we appreciate you sending them our way and we're going to pay you for them. Um, the way that works is uh, we're going to pay $50 the cash bonus once that agent, we get them all set up on contracting. My team and staff will handle that. And then beyond that, <clears throat> as they begin to write business and for the life of their production with IMS, we're going to pay you basis points out of our pocket on uh, their business. So whether that's target premium for life insurance, indexed annuities at 20 basis points, single premium life. You can see the numbers here and we can get this out to you. Um, that continues to be an ongoing revenue stream to you for those referred producers. Now, the producer that gets referred, we're not cutting into their contract level. They're not underneath you for any type of liability purposes. This is strictly a referral and we pay it out of our pocket, out of our dime, and we appreciate the referrals. Um, no limit on the number of individuals that come over as well. If you have an interest in the program for our referred producer, uh, talk to your primary contact here at IMS or reach out to me, Justin Ford, when we're done. I'd be happy to help. Once uh, you do start funneling that business through us, many of you had an opportunity to meet with our back office support uh, team here, and that's annuities, life insurance. We have 
processing and case design teams that process your business, follow up on your 1035 exchanges. We do medallion stamps or signature guarantees here as well. Um, case design assistance from my team on the annuities, uh, uh, Beth Rickcliffe's on the life insurance, and we're here to help you with those income planning and life designs as well. Forms at your fingertips. We'll talk about the website here in a second, but you can also email us or reach out, as many of you know. Uh, we pick up the call. Uh, don't take a voice message. We'll pick up a live call, get you what you need, whether that is Steve uh, Murray opening or answering the phone call, or myself, or anybody else here on the staff. We're here to assist you in your practice, and uh, that's part of our service guarantee. Uh, basically, submission to commission support, handling your commission follow-up questions, quotes for annuities and life insurance, as well as collaborative uh, concepts like today, and then also uh, top sales expertise and coaching when it relates to practice development, marketing funnels, et cetera, and uh, paperless contracting to wrap it all up. For those of us that uh, like to work late, little night owls, or uh, people that uh, may have thought we were closed yesterday and needed some access to those same forms, the term quotes, guidance on annuity rates, all these things can be accessed via IMS's website. Um, if you haven't taken a look at IMS's site for a while, I urge you to get out there and, and take a look at some of the tools. Talk to your primary contact here in IMS. Have them uh, ask them for an orientation, or you can also visit our YouTube page. Uh, Beth Rickcliffe, my uh, colleague here on life insurance, uh, did a webinar not too long ago going through our website. But give us a call. We'd be happy to go through some of the tools that are used very often and, and some that have been forgotten about. Uh, everything from RMD calculators, 72T calculators, um, a uh, access to topic-based factual information that can be used in sales presentations as it relates to everything from taxation, uh, state taxes, buy-sell agreements, all the way through Roth conversions that you can customize with your logo and information that's up-to-date and compliant. So if you have any uh, need for materials like that to, uh, to help the client that you're working with see a concept better, uh, to help also put you at the professional level that you're at, definitely visit our website and give us a call if we can help navigate, help you navigate where that's at. If you haven't registered, just uh, click on login and click register, put your email address in and away you go. You can quote term insurance and guaranteed universal life right from our website and take the application from right there using iGo. Uh, in addition to that, annuity rates as they became, uh, as they fluctuated, uh, rather quickly on the fixed side. Um, as many of you know, we had a rate book that we used to keep updated. Those rates have just changed too fast for us uh, to keep updated for you. So we now have, a, or we always had an access to a service on our website called Annuity Rate Watch, where you can literally go in. I helped a couple advisors earlier today go through this. I really like this tool. I've used it for years, but you can go in and sort uh, if, uh, on the most in intricate uh, uh, sorting here. You can actually go in, select state, amount of premium, length of surrender term for both indexed and fixed annuities, and even by carrier financial rating, the ability to take free withdrawals or interest only, maybe you want in the first year, um, sort by top rate, sort by financial rating, and create a complete spreadsheet to include commissions or reduce or not have the commissions on there if you want to share it with clients. Indexed annuities, all the details available, great guides to help. I uh, urge you to access that on our website as well, as well as current news, long-term care, and single premium life. A uh, lot of information on our website. If you're not a website person, give us a call. That's what we're here for. We're happy to help. Uh, we're trained in both, web and phone. In addition to iGo, I mentioned earlier we could take, uh, when you get on our website, you can do your life insurance business uh, in its entirety through our website from quote to submission. Uh, we have the same program, e-applications for annuities, and that is using a platform called Firelight. And uh, many of you are aware, if you haven't registered for Firelight today, definitely let us know. We'll get you registered, send you the link to do that. Uh, business getting paid with no NIGOs, as they call it, not in good order applications. 99.5% clean business coming through means faster issue. We've had cash cases, and in my career with using Firelight, cash, cash cases pay within 24 hours or less uh, issued policies. So Firelight can be a uh, wonderful uh, solution in, uh, in today's world, and you can do that right from our website as well. So if you have a question, let us know. We can get you registered for Firelight if you're not already, so you can do your annuity application paper, uh, paperlessly. And uh, 
adding the additional carriers to Firelight daily as they come on board. Firelight's the premier platform for uh, fixed and, and index business, uh, I believe here. I don't have numbers to back that, but uh, I do not know of a company that uh, there's more companies with Firelight than there are not. Um, creative marketing solutions. We touched base a little bit earlier on uh, putting together a branding package. We house a staff of individuals here that uh, work on everything from uh, stationary all the way through graphic designers, digital media specialists, social media specialists, uh, web specialists. Uh, if I mention graphic designers in there, um, and uh, writers, professional writers for your use here at IMS. We call it our creative marketing team, and it's part of our collaborative solutions with our advisors. Uh, by working with IMS and being a writing agent with IMS, you have access to leveraging the tools and this team as your own personalized advertising agency. Now, two things you will not see um, with our creative team that you will see potentially at a local advertising or PR firm is one, we are not going to uh, have you sign off on uh, a non, uh, non-disclosure that the material we create is, is our property. So in other words, you can go to an advertising agency in a local market and fill them in on how our business works, how our industry works, what you're looking to accomplish. They create a great design. Down the road, you stop paying for it or what have you. They decide to utilize that same material with another agent in a closed area. It can happen. Uh, that material is technically theirs. Uh, we don't do that because that's not our intent. Matter of fact, this is not a profit center for us from a dollar standpoint or revenue. Instead, it's here to assist our, our partnering advisors and also help grow the business we have through the submission of annuities, life and long-term care cases, and premium. So um, you do have access to this team. They are also um, employees of ours. This is not a, a outsourced team, so they are on our staff, on our benefits, um, and great people to work with here, but all they do is the insurance and financial services world. So a lot of expertise in that team. Uh, if you have any questions on enhancing your image this year, definitely talk to your primary contact here at IMS. Speaking of enhancing your practice, uh, maybe you're exploring the opportunity to open up additional revenue sources. Um, we're talking about adding your Series 65, um, picking up that license so that you can uh, start to acquire what they call uh, asset-based trails or manage money fees through revenue also make it easier to transition, be able to see a client's complete wealth picture, obviously, when you control all the assets and uh, and transfer those into the annuities that we do write when they're our fit. If you're looking at adding that license, whether you're, um, you've had it before or you're looking at just starting from scratch, give us a call. IMS Wealth Management, our registered investment advisory firm here, part of IMS, is an indexed annuity, an annuity-friendly indexed or, uh, uh, wealth management firm. You'd be surprised at the reduction or the lower fees that uh, that we have and compared to others. We'd love to do a consultation with you, but we'll help you with getting everything from getting your U10 window set up uh, to, to getting the, ca the study material to take your test. And then from there, transition you into the business. Or on the flip side, if you are uh, currently an IA, an investment advisory representative underneath a registered investment advisory firm, or if you're yourself, a registered investment advisory firm that's looking at stepping away from the compliance hassles um, or the company that you pay for compliance and falling underneath a, uh, an insurance-friendly uh, RIA, we want to talk to you. So let us know. Be happy to help uh, transition that. Any questions you may have. Uh, good to see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're, uh, with the pandemic, we had a little stop to our life and annuity academies, as many of you know, in, in 2020, 2021, but we're back on action. Coming up here in April, we've got our next life and annuity academy, two-day producer training, going to be covering everything from indexed annuities unraveled all the way through sales uh, uh, ideas and strategies from others in the room, rubbing elbows with other top producers across the country, annuity industry uh, news, threats and upcoming trends from the people that would know, carriers, top carriers, top producers, top agencies, as well as marketing systems that those advisors are using, wealth transfer tools, advanced annuity sales concepts and life, software tools, and more. If you have not registered or gotten yourself uh, on the list, definitely take a look uh, at, at doing so today. You can do that right on our website where it says the uh, Life and Annuity Academies, or reach out to us, talk to your primary contact here at IMS, and we can get you the link to register uh, for that April event. 
We are in the middle of, uh, speaking of trips, in the middle of our qualification period for our annual producer incentive appreciation trip, which is going to be in the Seaside Sanctuary. And uh, the dates for that trip are coming up uh, April of 2024. And we're in the qualification period now. Uh, most IMOs will do, or a lot of IMOs rather, will do a 12-month qualification period. We open that up to an 18-month. And uh, that helps with new advisors coming on board with us to be able to get access to it. And also, you get more, more time to put the production in. Uh, <clears throat> thumbnail sketch on qualifying. This is the annuity number, but uh, four and a half million points would equate to roughly four and a half million dollars in annuity premium or 450,000 in target premium. We're a mixture of the two. Single premium life fits in there too. Um, let us know if you have a question as to where you rank on that trip where you're currently at, or if you have questions in general, or just to let us know you'd like to be there. Talk to your primary contact here at IMS, and uh, we're on social media as well. And without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and bring on Nate, I appreciate it. If you have any questions on any of the IMS material today, we'll be reaching out to you. Feel free to email me at justinimesinc.com or give us a ring. Nate, are you ready to go? Ready to roll. Thanks for all the great information, Justin, on the support and um, really excited about the growth over at IMS. So, so great work. Oh, you are most welcome. Appreciate you being able to attend today. Always a pleasure. I'm going to switch this over to you so we'll be able to see your screen here. And luck barring me here, this will work. Let's see if we got it. Yeah, got I think it. we got it. Pick the, pick the right screen here. We'll do this one and then we'll get rolling. Perfect. Let me make sure you can see that as a full screen. Absolutely. Yep, it's good to go. All righty. Well, thank you, Justin. And thank you, everyone, uh, for taking time out of your busy schedule to, to join us today. Uh, my name is Nate Self. I'm with Guarantee Income Life. I'm, I'm the new hybrid wholesaler managing our relationship with IME. So if you do join, I'm um, sure I'll be working with you. Uh, this afternoon, we'll be covering a topic that, that seems to be top of mind for many professionals as market volatility has spiked over the last year and a half and clients are really contemplating all of their investment decisions. So what we'll be doing is we'll be discussing client biases with investing and how those biases affect their outcomes. And the overall goal from our time this afternoon is to make sure you have talking points and strategies to address client biases in a, in a nice cordial manner. Uh, then we'll wrap up with this brief overview of who we are here at Gillico. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with us, and then the solutions we offer to help your clients. Uh, should I have any questions or feedback, we'll have uh, an opportunity to do so, or there is a chat feature that you can and put those questions in. Now let's uh, jump right into it. So I'd like to kick off the presentation today with a quote from the youngest person ever to be crowned heavyweight champion. Mike Tyson once said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. And uh, I think this, this quote uh, should be kept in your mind throughout this presentation as we, we just go through the common pitfalls or mistakes that clients make when planning for retirement. And truly, everyone does have a plan um, until they get punched in the face. For clients, it might be easy for them to put, to put together a plan and stick to it when things are going well, but how will, how will they react in times of adversities, such as what we saw in 2022 when uh, the bond market and the equity market both fell for double digits in the first time in history. Um, and how can you help them get through that time? So what is behavioral finance? And in the most simplest form, it's the study of effects of psychology of investors with a focus on why people tend to make decisions based on personal bias instead of facts. For our key goal today, we're going to go through uh, the various biases and aversions that clients have that can cause them to make irrational decisions with their money. Then we'll discuss timing on how sequence of returns can impact the client's portfolio and income during the retirement. And then we'll wrap up by sharing some ideas on how utilizing a fixed index annuity could help optimize their outcomes and reduce the impact built in by their own personal biases and aversions. So there are four types of clients you'll likely work with uh, and they do range in, in styles so number one buy and hold investors uh, these are folks who are consistent in their strategy 
in decisions. However, they, they are impacted by sequence of returns late in retirement. Rebalancers are critical thinkers who adjust their portfolios on a systematic basis and can be impacted by how often and how they rebalance. And they're also affected by a sequence of returns. Valuators are often opinionated risk takers that are impacted by their own personal biases. And last but not least, shifters, uh, I, by the name you probably can guess, uh, these are folks who make sudden and frequent changes to their portfolio, typically based on current events, what they're hearing in the news, um, and what they read in the newspaper and may drastically be impacted by um, that media that they're intaking. Now, any of these types of clients could benefit from the key biases and aversions that we'll discuss here in a second. So one of the fastest growing channels on cable TV, um, it may surprise you, it's the Hallmark Channel. And, and the reason for it is the Hallmark Channel's success and growth um, can all be attributed to their predictable recipe in how they craft their stories. Um, at the beginning of each episode or movie, you're going to meet a set of characters um, they're going to be introduced to their personalities, and then those characters are going to encounter some sort of conflict. The characters then are going to overcome that conflict, and we all know at the end of the movie, they'll be in a better place than where they were when you first met them at the beginning. Now, in our uncertain world, the Hallmark Channel is providing certainty to all of their viewers, and that is really why they are the number one growing network on cable TV. So your clients, just like the Hallmark Channel, want a predictable story. They may just not have heard that consistent message um, like Hallmark about their retirement journey. So what we recommend here at Gillico is, you know, start by sharing why investment decisions they make now will impact how predictable their outcomes will be by removing market volatility with a guaranteed income stream to achieve what they've always wanted. But first, I would recommend sharing with them plot twists or challenges they'll face throughout their journey. So let's take a closer look at some of the common biases and aversions that can affect their decision-making process. So the first type of bias, anchoring bias, is used every day. Um, I fall victim to this, um, but I, being just more aware of it has certainly helped me in my purchasing decision making. Uh, it's the bias that causes us to rely too heavily on the first piece of information that is received to make our decision. We often see retailers use this all the time in their marketing strategy. So let's say you go to a store um, and store A is um, looking for a pair of shoes for an up party. Now, Store A offers no discounts on the pair of shoes that will fit your needs, and they are priced at $199. You decide to look at another store. Now, Store B has a similar pair of shoes, but the original price was set at $500. They were marked down just over $300 to $199, and you're more than likely to go with Store B because they are on sale. This retailer just appealed to your anchoring bias because when you saw the original price of the shoes at 300, you set an anchor in your mind that those shoes are worth 500. There's no evidence that those shoes are of any varying quality other than the original price at store A. And since all we have is the bias, it's our human nature to want to buy the discounted shoes. Now let's think about this from an investment perspective, right? Let's say you have a client who's watching the price of a specific stock. Now, six months ago, that stock was valued at $100 per share. Your client is using this as their anchor, and today it's valued at $50 per share. The client is thinking, you know, is this a good buy considering it's on discount of 50% and they invested $10,000. However, is this, is this really a good decision? Certainly based on the previous high of 100, this could be a good purchase, but there are many reasons that stock value could have declined. Is the client looking at all of these things or are they just falling prey to uh, this anchoring bias we just discussed? 
So the next type of bias, confirmation bias, is our tendency that confirms all of our beliefs, but does not contradict them. This can lead to your clients being well overconfident and extremely dangerous. So let's say you have a client who's bearish on the market currently. Uh, they'll tend to absorb information that reinforces their current beliefs and ignore information that's contrary to, to what they currently believe. Because they're bearish on the market, they'll hang on a little tighter to their money, or they may make a reallocation of their portfolio. Now, on the flip side, let's say you have a client who's bullish on the market. They'll absorb information that reinforces their beliefs and ignore information that tells them that the, the market is, is bearish, and they'll start pouring money into the market and spending at a higher rate. Um, and here at Gillico, you know, we're not here to tell you which direction the market's going to go and certainly provide you information to, to give you a better idea. But the fact of the matter is nobody really knows which direction the market's going. And clients are going to have their own opinions and they'll try to seek evidence that reinforces their opinion and ignore any information that doesn't. So what if a client was bearish in 2010 and they missed out on the greatest bull market in history? Um, and on the screen, I just have some uh, negative headlines from the year 2010, right after uh, the recession. And if you wanted to believe that the market was going to go down, there was not a short uh, of articles that would have confirmed your belief that the market was going to continue to go down and you would have missed out on you know, nearly 10 years positive gains uh, every single year. So to avoid this confirmation bias with your clients, it's, it's important to increase communication between yourself and them, stick to a plan. Um, and, you know, obviously you want to set that plan first and then try to look at various investment decisions objectively and, and remove any of those biases as possible. So recency bias is assuming something will happen again and again because it's happened before or putting a greater emphasis on what has already happened. So in 2010, again, a millennial entered the workforce in, in 2000, might be reluctant to save uh, for retirement continually. Now, why would that be? Uh, they started saving for retirement in 2000 only to see a tech bubble burst and an eight-month recession that spanned from March 2001 to November 2001. Then a short time later, they, they recovered. However, the Great Recession started in December of 2007 and then lasted 18 months. Now, needless to say, after two significant recessions, younger Americans were skeptical of the market and many were late to capitalize fully on the bull market in the 2010. And the recency bias caused them to think that another bear market was right around the corner. Uh, we ha all have this tendency to think what is happening now will continue to last forever or what happened in recent memory will happen again and again. This is why people usually invest at the wrong times and people tend to invest after a strong year and tend not to invest after a down year. And to address this with your clients, just share with them that nobody consistently has all the right investment decisions, um, including experts. Uh, the best strategy is to have a plan, again, stick to it and reevaluate longer term allocations on a systematic basis. Now I want to just do a brief uh, exercise here on hurting bias. Now on the screen, you see three lines, A, B, and C. And if I were to ask you which line, A, B, or C, which one would be equal to line X on the left? And most people would be correct, and they would say it is line B. And Solomon Ash, he was a scientist. Uh, back in the 1900s, did a study with people individually and found that people by themselves would select line B and get the questions right about 99% of the time. And he then did an experiment with 50 male students at a university. And he conducted this test with one male student at a time and put them in a room with seven planted participants. And the planted participants agreed in advance they would choose option C. Each planet participant had to give their response out loud with the real participant going last. Now, when you had these planted participants, and 32% of the time, the, the planet participant would conform to the rest of the group and give an incorrect answer. Uh, and the reason that was is because everyone before him 
gave the wrong answer and he didn't want to go out of line and, and try to give the correct answer. Um, and this is what is what is called hurting bias. Now, to address this bias with your clients, you're going to want to be sensible with them about their goals. Uh, try to take out comparing themselves to their friends and family uh, and really be personal about their own objectives and try to remove emotions from their decision making process. That's really going to help them with uh, eliminating hurting bias. The next type of behavioral finance topic is uncertainty inversion. And this really centers around how people will usually choose a known probability. In fact, people want a more certain outcome. And I think this is probably the, the biggest point in this whole presentation that uh, relates to our business. So let's play a short game here. We got two boxes. Both are filled with 100 red and 100 black balls. Box A is filled with 50 red and 50 black. Box B on the right is filled with a total of 100 balls, but you don't know how many are red and how many black there are. So if you were to reach into one of the boxes without looking to draw out a red ball, I'll give you $100. So which box would you pull from? The majority of you on the call will probably want to go with the left box because it's a known probability of 50 red and 50 black, a 50% chance. Now let's play it again. But this time, I want you to draw out a black ball. Now, a majority of you will still go and choose the left box because it's, again, a known probability. But with this theory, if you pick the left box the first time, you probably pick the right box, right? Because you think there's a better chance of getting a red on the left one, right? Uh, the bottom line is the fear of uncertainty clouds all of our judgment, and people tend to favor a known probability and a more predictable outcome. This is why you'll run across a client of yours probably, um, I'm sure you have this recently, where they've had a six month CD for 10 years. Uh, the client has a known outcome, they've had that for 10 years, and they're given a stated return every six months that they'll have an opportunity to move their money, but they don't because it's because there's a certainty and then they've had it here recently. And to address this with them, make sure the client is investing with a future goal in mind. Um, certainty isn't everything. You have to have an objective at the, end of the, at the end of the tunnel. So loss aversion uh, is an important concept to speak with your clients about. Uh, it's the idea that clients hate losses twice as they much like gains. And I'm sure many of you have heard of this. And uh, there's actually two scientists, Kahneman and Tversky, that did a, an experiment. And, uh, I just want to briefly go through this with you all. So I'm going to give you two options here for a, a bet. Uh, you have a 100% chance of winning $3,000 or an 80% chance of winning $4,000. Which one of these would you choose? Now, in this study by Kahneman and Tversky, nearly 80% of participants chose to take the sure win of $3,000. Uh, no surprise there. Everyone likes a guaranteed win. Now, when asked the same question regarding losses, the outcome was different. So when they asked, which one would you choose, 100% chance of losing $3,000 or an 80% chance of losing $4,000, uh, these uh, participants were willing to gamble with 92% choosing to gamble on the opportunity and chose 80% chance to lose $4,000. This story illustrates the length that individuals, investors will go to to avoid losses. And we see this with investing all the time. Uh, there was a study that uh, recorded trading records from 1987 to 1993. And we found that investors were quicker to sell stocks that were high or winners, but would tend to hold on to stocks that were down or losers to try to recoup some of their losses. And on average, the winners that were sold averaged three and a half percent higher market returns than the losers that were held. So, how do you address this? Uh, myopic loss aversion with your clients. This is, again, the theory that many of you have probably heard, that clients hate losses twice as they must like gains. And you'll, you'll just want to communicate and reinforce that their long-term goals um, are the most important thing and have clear communication with them, avoid panic selling, and reiterate that the market is, is fluctuating 
every day. Um, and we have to stay resilient and not let our emotions get the best of us. So in summary here, behavioral finance, uh, really recognize your biases in yourself and your clients, define objectives, put a plan in place, stick to the plan, and communicate with your clients and reinforce those plans and objectives, and you'll be in a much better position um, and even get more referrals by doing this. So the three pillars of a retirement plan, if you want to take it one step further, and when understanding a client behavior, I like to start by identifying these three pillars uh, during construction. Pillar one is product selection. This includes various investment vehicles uh, your clients are using for their retirement dollars, such as mutual funds, ETFs, annuities, life insurance. Pillar two is allocation. Uh, meaning how the client is going to allocate to each product. And number three is timing. And timing is the most important pillar. And I know this because of this next slide I'm going to share. Uh, from 1990 to 2019, the S&P 500 index returned an average of 9.96%. However, the average equity investor returned only 5%. Now, why was there such a lag in the average retail investor? And the, the whole reason is clients tend to buy and sell at the wrong times. So the importance of timing, behavior has nothing to do with the outcome of a client's return. It has everything to do with the sequence of those returns. So let's do a a little study here of three clients, all age 65 with $500,000 in retirement. We have Adam, Bill, and Chad. They're all great friends. Adam retires in 1995, and he puts $500,000 into a passive S&P 500 ETF. He then begins to withdraw 5% per year. After 16 years, Adam's $500,000 investment grew to $834,000 all while taking $25,000 in withdrawals per year. Phenomenal. On the flip side, his friend Bill retires just five years later in 2000, and he goes into the same path of S&P 500 ETF and withdraws $25,000 per year. After 16 years, Bill's $500,000 has been depleted to just $27,699. This example has everything to do of sequence of returns. Adam was the beneficiary of great timing during the first three years of re his retirement in 1995 to 1997. The S&P 500 increased by a whopping 111%. But when Bill retired, the S&P decreased by 40% in just those three years, or excuse me, after his first two years of retirement, virtually taking out his entire retirement portfolio. These are two real world examples of how two people retired only five years apart, invested in the same product, and had a drastic difference in their outcomes after 16 years. Now, let's take a look at Chad here in our third example. The reason Chad is important to the story is he placed $500,000 in an indexed annuity here with Gillico. Um, he chose our 10 year wealth choice product and allowed him to withdraw. 5.93% per year, or 29,650, guaranteed for the rest of his life. Throughout this presentation, you know, we highlighted the different biases and aversions that can cause people to buy and sell at the wrong times. And remember, timing can significantly affect the client's income and retirement, and an index annuity completely removes that sequence of return risk and retirement income. So, what can a fixed index annuity? do for your clients and, and it may not be the right fit for everyone but it can check a lot of boxes to help your clients avoid these biases and aversions in their portfolio fias can be used to provide predictable income and reduce or eliminate sequence of return risk that we just discussed in the last slide in addition if you have clients who are invested in bonds as their safe money solution consider an index annuity as a bond alternative um, where we saw a drastic hit uh, with rising interest rates here last year. Remember, clients tend to gravitate towards more predictable outcomes and they tend to avoid losses. 
And an FIA can help those clients avoid losses, but give them upside that they can act as an alternative to the current rate environment we're in right now. Now, finally remove some of those emotions from a portion of their portfolio if it fits the risk tolerance. And this FIA can give them a guarantee and peace of mind that they're looking for. So a little bit about us here at Gillico. We were actually founded in 1926. We just had our 97th birthday, pretty exciting. And we've been helping generations financially prepare for the future uh, for, for, again, 97 years, pretty exciting. So we became a, a member of the Couvert family of companies as the first acquisition back in 2016. And here at Gillico, we have a real small family feel uh, that really cares about all of our IMO partners and all of our advisors. Our main office is located down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we recently just opened an office here in Des Moines as we look to grow our business development teams. And our overall purpose here at Gillico is to deliver value-oriented retirement solutions to our middle market clients with a commitment of long-term sustainable growth strategy with a limited number of partners. Just taking a look at our premium growth, uh, when we were acquired, we were doing about 45 million in premium. Uh, 2021 grew all the way up to 852. And last year, glad to say we crossed the billion dollar mark for the first time. We did $1.225 billion in premium. It's a really strong product. And we actually just got upgraded to an A minus rating with AM Best. So uh, growth is, is in our recipe for the year and we're hoping on board. So I just want to briefly touch on our FIA that we have to offer uh, to help with these client biases and aversions. And we launched this FIA series, The Wealth Choice, back in 2020 with freedom and flexibility as the two main pillars to build to appeal to this underserved middle market. And the features and benefits you'll see here that I'll go through in a minute are to be easily understood. We built it that way um, for both yourself as the advisor and your clients. So you won't see no, you won't see roll-ups for, for a benefit base or a phantom bucket. You won't see fees to add a spouse for a joint income. And all you'll see is really streamlined product with strong crediting rates. All in, the suite has a, a low cost and true cost of 75 basis points. And we deliver peace of mind, growth potential, as well as high early income. And this really can be a true stop a uh, true one-stop solution for all your clients looking for accumulation, income, or both, which is, which is great. A lot of carriers are just building accumulation or income products. So taking a look, uh, a brief fact sheet here, we issue all the way up to age 90 on the five and the seven year product uh, for just straight accumulation, which is unique. We have 10% free withdrawals. If you wanna do a free withdrawal strategy and not have an income rider fee, that's certainly an option. Um, even in the first contract year, your clients can take advantage of 10% free. And we have a full return of premium in the sixth year. Um, taking a look at our most recent rate sheet that we increased uh, here in November, uh, we got a 5% fixed bucket on all of our bands. So we have a 5, a 7, a 10, and a 10-year with a bonus version. And all of these have a 5% fixed bucket. A lot of people are trying to to weather the possible recession this year and they want a guaranteed return and then reallocate next year. So it's really nice that we have a high fixed rate on all of our products. We have a 10 year bonus. That's a 10, uh, 10 year 5% premium bonus straight to the accumulation value. And it has an extremely high crediting rates. A cap rate is at 10.75, or you could go with a 5% fixed rate and guarantee your client 10, you know, that 5% fixed rate, 5% bonus. And then on our shorter term product, uh, you know, caps, 11% uh, 11, 11 on the five year, 11 and a half on the seven, 12% on the 10. So just really good new money rates across the board. You got a par strategy, a monthly strategy, and we even have a volatility control uh, index uh, to help you diversify it, your strategies to help increase the likelihood of a positive index credit. Now, new money rates are extremely important, but here at Gillico, we believe that pricing products to hold the rates the best we can is what these clients deserve. Um, we price with a levelized options budget. And what that simply means is we set, spend the same amount of money in the first year of the contract as the 10th year of the contract on call options. And what that does is that allows us to hold the rates even better. Um, 
we have a marketing piece on the screen here that you can share this with the client during a meeting that talks about our perfect renewal history. And it's a really nice piece, you know, just showing the value that we believe that when you sign up for an annuity, you're signing up for the length of the contract and the carrier we believe in holding their rates. Now, this isn't to say we, we can't. Um, this just shows that we are, are committed to doing our best to holding these rates throughout the contract. Uh, just a brief on our, our income feature. It's on a seven and 10 year. Uh, it's available in the fourth contract here. Only 75 basis points for the rider. And it's the same payout for, for joint income. And to calculate the income for the client, it's always just 10% of the client's age. Again, I mentioned we're trying to make this practice streamlined and easy as possible for you and the client to understand. And this is just one of those features. 10% of the client's age, so a 63-year-old would be a 6.3% payout factor. 68-year-old would be a 6.8% payout. And again, it's just based on the accumulation value. And you won't have any confusing benefit-based columns to illustrate, making, making it much easier to explain to your clients. Another great feature is we don't reduce for, for joint. We simply just take the youngest spouse's age to determine the payout, uh, making this one of the best joint income products in the industry. And then on the screen here, I just uh, wanted to show you our free withdrawal strategy. Now, this is really unique because it's not going to show up on annuity rate watch. If you're going to spreadsheet income, uh, it won't show up. And this is a great value uh, to you as most of the advisors in your area won't know this strategy. And it's very easy to illustrate. So what we do is we show uh, a free withdrawal for the first three years. And then the, the client can turn on income in the fourth year. And our, our illustration will calculate this for you. And what it's calculating is calculating how much can the client take in free withdrawals so that there's no possible reduction in the fourth contract year. Uh, so here we got uh, either a single or a joint 65 because it's exactly the same for both. Um, we threw it all in the fixed bucket and we're utilizing the 10-year product with the 5% bonus to give our immediate boost to the accumulation value for that income. And we can generate nearly $6,300 per year for one or two 65-year-olds on 100000 for the rest of their life. And there's still that accumulation value growth potential if you want to go into an index strategy. Uh, so a really good uh, income product here for joint. So I know our, our football season just wrapped up, and I'm pretty bummed about it myself. But we like to do what's called an income challenge. And what that simply means is on your next case or your previous case, reach out to your IMS marketer, reach out to me, and we can put together a comparison for you to see if we can beat that income. Um, and even if you don't, even if Gillico doesn't come out ahead, I'm always like to send out just thank yous uh, for giving us a try. So just kind of wrap up on why wealth choice to help reduce client biases and aversions. Um, great for short-term accumulation, especially for older clients. As, again, we issue up to age 90 on the five and seven year. We have a high first year rate of return, making, uh, making a great way to make up market losses from last year. So you compare that 5% bonus with a 5% fixed rate, guaranteed 10%. Uh, clients looking to take early income uh, and joint cases as well as we don't reduce for joint. The last thing I wanna mention is we just launched a bonus program on this product uh, up to a full 1% additional compensation on the wealth choice on all premium. Um, I can send out a flyer or reach out to your IMS marketer for more information, uh, but we will pay that bonus out quarterly. Once you hit thresholds, there's three tiers, one, two, and three million. Uh, so real low bars to hit. We're looking for, for agent partners that want to work with us uh, throughout 2023. And then the last thing I want to touch on here is just our uh, high MIGA rates. We're committed to the MIGA space. Uh, you may have heard of us because of our MIGA rates. We actually, in fact, had the highest MIGA rate on the three to five year from November, mid-November to December 6th. So uh, we're committed to the space. And I'm sure at one point this year, we'll have the top rate again. So with that, I want to thank you all for your time today. We look forward to growing our relationship together uh, with IMS, and we certainly appreciate the time. Shall I have any questions? Put it in the chat box, or I'll 
I'll open it up uh, now and I have our sales desk number on the screen. So I'll pass it back to Justin. Nate, definitely appreciate your time as always and, and insight too. Every time uh, I get with you here, I pick up something additional. Income challenge. Yeah, it is a challenge because the last time you gave me that income challenge, I ended up uncovering four different cases <laughs> where they were uh, <laughs> shopping out uh, replacements. I mean, you helped me with one. But uh, even some of those older contracts, I was thinking about the, the other day with a producer partner of mine. Ten years ago, it was 2013. Um, yeah, that's straight line math right there. But what products were you selling or what products were being offered in the, uh, again, we'll take it down to product centric, but in the indexed annuity market 10, 15 years ago, it, a handful of those products were products that we didn't think we could ever, we would ever see uh, a benefit change to or we wouldn't ever see a way out of that product later. Uh, some of these two, -tier, not two tiered, but uh, bonus enhancement annuities, but shop the income. I uh, urge you guys take the income challenge and gals, income challenge. Uh, there may be an opportunity to get the client something better. Reviewing those existing annuity contracts uh, is huge right now because of the pricing environment that we are in. Uh, again, nice to see that five, seven, and 10 year fixed account option, but 5%, even with the way you guys handle it. <laughs> pricing environment, right? The pricing environment changes. We've got an opportunity to make additional income, but also help readjust the client, overcome some of the client's potential challenges, maybe even get an impact into changes in their life that uh, yield opportunities to meet the next generation that'll be handing that wealth in. So, good point there. Um, as always. So I'm going to go through a couple polling questions here. We are going to be following back up with uh, with everybody that uh, would like additional information, et cetera, and we'll get some basic information out. If you do have questions, reach us, uh, myself or Nate. Uh, don't hesitate. Give him a call direct. He's a great guy. Uh, me as well. Um, but I'm going to start with the first polling question here of today, and uh, we'll get these started off right. I'll give, you, give us a little bit of time. I'm going to change the presentation over to me and this uh, relays back to us and, and marketing staff here, our marketers, uh, so that they have a better way of packaging the information to get to you and uh, gives us an idea of what you're looking for and your feedback. So I appreciate that. Uh, let's take a look at the polling questions here. Here we go. Okay. First polling question as it rolls out here, would you like more information? on our next Life and Annuity Academy coming up here in April. For those of you that haven't already gotten yourself on the list or registered for that, as mentioned earlier, uh, would you have interest? Let us know, we'll get you the link, get you on the list and go from there. Would uh, love to collaborate with you more. As we collect those responses here, I'm gonna be, uh, we've got about 10 seconds left. I'll close this poll out. Thank you very much for all participating here. And we'll go on to our next one. So let's take a look. Are you, uh, go ahead, would you like, uh, first and foremost, would you like more information on today's products? So with Gillico, Guaranteed Income Life Insurance Company, uh, that pertains to anybody in the room that says, I've got someone for the income challenge. Anybody in the room that says, I want to get licensed with uh, Guaranteed Income Life. Anybody in the room that says, oh, I think I have that contract. I sold one of the fixed annuities. I'm interested in the Wealth Choice Series. Give us a call or a request and uh, We'll get you down here for that information out. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna close that one out here as we're collecting. And our last one of the day here. Um, always love to uh, to launch a, uh, a question with uh, with a negative, but are you happy with your current IMO? You know, I might even reword that. Maybe I was a, a, a different tone when I wrote that. But are you getting what you need from your existing resources, whether it be your IMO, whether it be your broker dealer, uh, the insurance carriers like uh, Guaranteed Income Life, uh, do they have a producer incentive program? Are they partnering with you on topics like behavioral finance, which this, uh, by the way, this will be recorded or is being, you'll have access to Nate's presentation. If you're like me, I've got to go back, Nate, and re-review everything you did. There was some good stuff in there. <laughs> I need to take more notes, man. Um, but understanding that. So, you know, are you partnering with someone? Are you currently getting what you need? And if not, what is it that you're looking for? Uh, it's another alternative to looking at it. What we're looking for, and that is an opportunity to partner with you on a closer level. Uh, but we understand being a Midwest firm, we've got to earn it. So uh, happy to do that. Well, appreciate everybody's responses and attendance today. Look forward to speaking with you here about the income challenge. Nate, 
thank you again for your time. Uh, look forward to getting you some more up there and some challenging cases as well. And have a great uh, rest of the week, guys. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, everyone. Thank you. Take care.